Has your think noodle ever wondered about the insane technologies that are used in an iPhone factory to get that little old piece of technology into your hands? Have you ever thought about how it was that it got made, basically? You know, all the big old machinery that goes and slaps stuff together? Well, if you did, then hey, today in this video, we're going to clear up all your answers. First of all, what would be the reason behind every person's first choice of a phone being an iPhone? The answer to that definitely would keep the quality and the durability of the device. A strong core and frequent updates that help the iPhones to be as fresh as they can be after a year of development. I mean, people wouldn't waste thousands of dollars on new models of iPhone. In fact, if people are anticipating the next release by the brand. Behind the packaging of every iPhone, there's a note that says that this Apple product was designed in California. But that doesn't mean that they're manufactured in California. So where are they manufactured? And what's it like to be inside of an Apple iPhone factory? To make it clear and rather straightforward, there are two main concepts involved in producing iPhones. Assembling and manufacturing. Yeah, obviously. Apple sources its material from all over the world, as the goal is to buy the very best technology at the lowest price possible. <clears throat> sure. More than 200 companies worldwide manufacture and supply Apple iPhone manufacturers with the components that they need to produce the phones. These component manufacturers have glass screen interfaces, cameras, memory chips, casings, and everything involved in the process of creating one of those bricks of addictions we call iPhones. And these companies are mostly located in the East and Southeast Asia, where labor is, you know, cheap. These include South Korea, Taiwan, China, Japan, India, Germany, and the United States of America. Although iPhone manufacturing companies are located worldwide, these manufacturing facilities are only part in two manufacturing companies, Foxconn and Pegatron. That sound like Decepticons, to be honest. These Taiwanese firms manage the Apple iPhone production and, and ensure that complete iPhones are delivered on time, while they still meet all the required and standards upheld by Apple. However, nothing really stands up to the max of Foxconn factory established by Terry Gao located in Zhengzhou. According to Forbes, Terry is worth $6.5 billion and is titled the Donald Trump of Taiwan. The vast factory that spreads across 2.2 million square miles is also known as the iPhone City. The significant advantage of this factory is in its remarkable assembly line. The, the Foxconn factory employs around 350,000 people, and it's known to be Apple's longest running partner in the business of building an iPhone. Foxconn assembles the majority of Apple's iPhones in its factory located in Shenzhen, China. The Foxconn factory was built in 2010 exclusively to help with the Apple iPhone production needs. Foxconn is the iPhone company's trade name, and the company's official name is Huihan Precision Industry Company Limited. The factory does the final assembly and the testing and the packaging of all the iPhones. There are 94 production units at the Zhengzhou manufacturing site, and it withholds the facility to produce 500,000 iPhones per day, or roughly 350 a minute. <laughs> Yikes. Once the iPhone leaves the product assembly line, it's placed in a sleek white fiberboard box, wrapped and put on a wooden pallet, which is then wheeled out the trucks waiting outside the factory. The assembled iPhone would then be transported to the factory gate, which is a few hundred yards away, into a large Chinese customs facility. The customs operator in the bonded zone allows Apple to sell their iPhones more easily to Chinese customers. And at the final point of assembly on the iPhone, China also serves as a starting point for Apple's global tax strategy. See, Foxconn delivers the finished iPhones to Apple, which then further delivers them to the Apple affiliates worldwide. As smartphones are small enough and easy enough to be shipped in planes in huge quantities, it's pretty cost-effective. Apple contracts with major carriers, including FedEx and UPS, to ship iPhones around the globe. One Boeing 747 plane can easily carry about 150,000 iPhones tucked right into its aluminum underpouch, like a kangaroo of the sky. iPhones produced for the US and other parts of the world leave the customers by truck and are further transported to the Zhengzhou airport. The airport faced a significant expansion in recent years as the production scale of the iPhones has, shocker, increased. The FedEx, UPS, and other carriers transport the iPhones bound to the US to Anchorage, Alaska, where the jets can actually refuel. Then they travel to Louisville, Kentucky, where the logistic professionals sort and reroute the iPhones to their final destinations. Chinese customers pay a much higher price for their iPhones because of their currency fluctuations and the country's hefty value-added tax. The Foxconn factory is located more than 20 miles outside of Zhengzhou, separated by freeways, suburbs, and dirt scrublands. Foxconn's presence in a city of 10 million residents as of 2020 has transformed the lives of its poorer residents and it's built new roads, homes, and power plants. With a workforce competing with many U.S. cities, 
The factory has sprouted what residents have named the iPhone City, or the Silicon Valley of Zhengzhou. The factory workers there live in dorms in 10 to 12 story buildings located right outside Foxconn's gates. At the same time, migrating entrepreneurs and vendors have set up shops below and around the dorms to make a living selling clothes, cooking street food, and offering massages. With a population of 1.3 million employees on China's mainland, Foxconn is by far the country's largest private employer. Everything might seem fine until you hear about the accusations against Foxconn due to poor working conditions and harsh penalties for workers. Many of the staff at the factory work 12 hours a day, 6 days a week. Foxconn experienced different suicides among its workers between 2010 and 2011. Both Foxconn and Apple had to make very specific changes to control the situation. Even though such measures weren't done with any good intentions, they, they, they didn't dig in deep to the roots of exploitations, but instead they actually erected anti-jumping nets on their buildings. Yeah, let's not fix anything about the structure that makes people want to kill themselves, let's just throw nets up. Welcome to the world. I mean seriously, never before has such a modern factory hidden such a large-scale suicide prevention tactic. Further investigation into the working conditions gave us an even bleaker view of the whole situation. Many think tanks have calculated that Zhengzhou workers would need to work about 80 to 90 hours of overtime every month just to be able to make a livable wage of 3,402 won. In contrast, the legally allowed overtime under Chinese law is 36 hours. Apple has promised to work with its partner Foxconn to fix the wage violations and reduce the overtime to a maximum of only 49 hours a week, which is still more than the Chinese law, so just let that one sit. However, this was a window dressing the entire situation as the overtime hours for some employees remained the same. Investigations also revealed how workers were frequently fined and they had their wages deducted for every minor issue they made, like as, such as not being able to finish their food or, or, or not dining in their assigned canteens. <sighs> there was even a documentary named Explicit that exposed the human cost of your favorite smartphones. The management is known to be aggressive and duplicitous. Workers are publicly scolded for not keeping proper time. Every minute of a worker's time is accounted for. Every minute. They're forced to work hard and given promises that are never kept. People are regularly promised double pay for overtime hours and never, ever is fulfilled. And if it is, it's one out of ten times. Many people don't know how horrible the working conditions of the factory are, but the locals are so poor they can't spare a thought. But the locals are so poor that they literally cannot think about working anywhere else. Foxconn has built power plants and new roads from the assistance that Foxconn has received from the government. They've also managed to pay for transportation and energy costs. Foxconn also takes advantage of the assistance they receive from the provincial government to settle export target bonuses that total $56 million. Sometimes when work gets a little overwhelming at the factory, the company gets additional workers from government coal companies. Foxconn is infamous for its military-style management and the string of suicides that occur on its premises. Foxconn workers admit that their work is boring and it is repetitive, but they acknowledge that it's not overwhelming. Amid the accusations that Foxconn has faced, many people actually enjoy working there, especially the natives of Henan. Many of Foxconn's employees are in their 20s and giving in the environment a scholarly feeling, a scholastic feeling. You probably know what I'm going for. Unlike many working stations, employees here don't apply for a specific role. Instead, they get assigned to the department where people are needed. Some departments, like inventory control, are a lot more relaxed than others, so it's really luck of the draw. Many workers at Foxconn's Zhengzhou factory and other factories in China complain about the overcrowded dorms, the sanitation conditions, and appropriate meals. Workers who can't stand the dorms or those with families can opt for the one-bedroom apartments, but those are slightly more expensive. So with all this information now in your gullet, perhaps you would want to work at the most prominent Apple factory in China. And if opportunity knocked, you'd take it. Totally. Yeah, this sounds like a fun place for me to be. I'm definitely not comfortable just sitting here at home recording videos. No. So anyways, I hope that was only mildly depressing for you. And um, yeah, leave a comment what you thought down in the comment section below. Later, guys.